I, Minister, I, I support what the bill is trying to do, which is move from single year to three year. I, I just wanted to uh, get a few assurances from you, things, maybe, maybe a few explanations on it. Um, the first is a technical one, which is as we move from one year to three year ceilings, are the ceilings for years two and three binding on the following years? Do you know what I mean? So let's say this year we say, okay, for, for years 2014, 15, and 16, the departmental ceilings are this. And then we're back here next year and we're looking at 2015. Mm -hmm. Well, we've already, or the government has already set ceilings for 2015. Can they then be moved or have they been locked in through legislation? Yeah, it's, um, we're, we're sinking ourselves now, and that's what I was getting advice on, we're sinking ourselves into a European semester now as well. So there will be, uh, we have to uh, have regard to the new uh, requirements of, uh, of the European budgetary decisions upon us. Um, it will be possible for us to alter limits by formal government decision subsequently. So it, it'll be a, a snapshot in time in tandem with the obligations to, to maintain the fiscal disciplines set uh, under the European treaties. Okay. So, yeah. item seven in the bill, if you look at it, it's laid out. Section seven, sorry. Section seven, sorry. Section, <coughs> section seven on page four. Section seven? No. Subsection. <laughs> I thought I was missing a lot of the bill. Subsection seven on page four? Yeah. Of the bill. Yeah. Oh, the bill. Oh, sorry. Just read it out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it says is, uh, yeah. okay. subject to the government expenditure ceiling or revised government expenditure ceiling, as the case may be, where the government have made a decision under subsection 6 or this subsection, they may, upon a proposal of the minister, make a further decision revising any ministerial expenditure ceiling for any one or more of the financial years concerned. Thanks, Chair. So then, Minister, am I right in thinking that this is, there's nothing legally binding on the government then? This is essentially a statutory framework for, which I agree with, but for a, for a statement, a multi-year statement of intent on expenditure ceilings that the well, government that, can review. That's, that's all anything can be. I mean, you can't tie the hands of government. I mean, if, if the government in 2007 was looking at a three-year horizon, mm. they would have a very different horizon to view by the end of 2008. Mm. So you have to um, have the flexibilities to be able to alter course. Uh, to meet changed circumstances, and that's understood. Yeah, I agree. I just wanted it. Wanted it. Yeah, but by and by and large, the idea is to give as much certainty as you can. Yeah, sure. But you can't lock it in. And it's not locked in for the following year either. Is that correct? So let me give you an example. Right. Let's say um, you come. You the, the government makes this decision, and you, as Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, inform the doll. Um, these are the ceilings for 2014. Um, and let's say you do that. What month would that happen in? Do you know? Well, I mean, we're presenting now a multi-annual budget um, twice a year. We're giving the, the horizon in April, and then just before the budget uh, itself, it'll be just pre-October, we'll be giving you the multi-annual um, framework for the next three years. So that'll be a, a, a twice-annual reporting. Um, and by and large, that should, with fiscal discipline uh, and more settled times, be a horizon that is actually uh, replicated in the next horizon with, with certain, some sense of certainty. It's only where things will alter in some sort of change circumstances or a change of significant change in policy uh, that which alter the horizon that you set. And is the April document the SPU? Yes. Okay, so the SPU in April will contain expenditure ceilings for each department? Yes. Okay. Um, On a multi-annual basis? Yeah, sure. But that can change in the budget then? Yes. Yeah, okay. So it's a, it's a statement of intent. Yeah, I mean, we published in April this year, the SPU, yeah. but we've taken no regard for what decisions will be made in the October budget, clearly. So the horizons are set, yeah. but the specifics will be altered, and there will be a new pre-budget set of documentation published to set the new horizons before the budget itself. Okay, thank you. Um, a concern I have, and I'm hoping it's not real, but just it's around dull oversight. So what's going to happen here is twice a year, as you've explained, the government will come back and inform the dull 
uh, these are the latest updated expenditure ceilings for department. And there are statements of intent rather than legally binding on, on the government. Um, I think more than statements of intent, but they're not legally binding, right. you're right. Um, now, in an awful lot of cases, ceilings will be the actual uh, target set in the budget. Right? Right. There's probably not too many people who will come back to government and say, actually, you told me I could spend 10 billion, I only need eight and a half. So floors and ceiling gets confused, you mean? Right. Yeah, I mean, the ceiling becomes the, 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 the maximum. Maybe it becomes what I, you know, one would expect, I guess. Let's say it's health. Huh? Let's, say, let's say it's health, and, and it says 10 billion. One would expect in the budget, if that was the April figure, one would expect in the budget that the proposed budget is 10 billion. So my concern is that the government is going to go away, it's going to set these things, and it's going to inform the doll. So this, these are the ceilings, but actually they're the, tar they're, they're the targets. Do you think the doll loses any of its uh, budgetary oversight ability, limited <coughs> as that is, um, in, this, in this mechanism? I'm not convinced it is, but it's not a leading question. I'm no, just no, genuinely I mean, curious note. <coughs> is the doll losing anything in terms of, I actually think the doll is gaining a lot in terms of oversight in this, but is it, is it also potentially losing anything? I don't think so. I think it, it, is, um, it is gaining, as you rightly say. I don't see how it could lose anything in it. Um, I don't think that, that oversight, the way it was done for the last 20 years, is particularly strong. Mm. A lot of it was, uh, as Deputy Fleming, I think, has made a lot, strong case on it repeatedly, was post-fact uh, looking at expenditure when it, the money was spent. Um, and even, you know, the, the construction of a budget each year was entirely an executive function. Now, you can say, well, that's largely the case still, but I would like it not to be. Um, and I think in less challenging times, when we have some money to spend in an, expansion, an expansive way rather than in a contractive way. It'll be easier, particularly for opposition people, to engage in the budgetary process. Because I, I recognise it is hard for members of the opposition to start tabling um, budgetary cuts and saying, I prefer that cut over that cut, or we, we should take resources there and spend it there. Um, but the whole idea of having um, a multi-annual framework having a comprehensive review of expenditure so that options at least, not necessarily all options, but most options on the table, then you could engage with line departments as a committee system and explore the options. And for example, in the area of social protection, look at the, the, fun, the, the sum of money that's spent, for example, on child benefit and ask realistically, is that the right way to do it? Should we be a different balance of it? Should it be spent on services rather than direct funding? Or the money we spend on the elderly? And more especially now, in the context of the, uh, of the debate, for example, we've just had, there's an enormous quantum of money spent on, on, on the disability sector. I mean, if you look at departmental expenditure, I've said to you that there's 1.3 billion euros spent on disability in the Department of uh, on special education in the Department of Education. There's about 1.5 billion in the Department of Health. There's about three billion in the Department of Social Protection, and you go through transport and every other department. It's an enormous quantum of money, and in a, in a structured parliament, we should be actually saying, is, is that the best way of supporting our citizens with a disability? And I would hope that the budgetary process and the committee process would, on a whole year basis, get their teeth into that. So it's not looking, did somebody spend the money they're supposed to in the proper way? But what are the outcomes for this? And is it the appropriate way to do it? Uh, and also to break down the silo attitude of departments, that you know, if money is transferred from one department to another to more effect, that should be a welcome thing. Okay, thank you. Can I ask you then on that, and it, it, it's relevant to... No, definitely, because we've sorry to to finished today, but I... I'm really off it. Okay. Please look okay. Sorry. Um, I think I kind of operate on the basis that there's amendments in to the sections that's yeah. kind of a debate, but just kind of calling in with a whole series of questions on a section is kind of... Is that, not, is that not part of the no, but, process? No, but what I, would say, no. what I would say is just if you can kind of focus it up so we can move on, because we do have to form oh, a copy. Okay. okay. No, I, I hear you. I, okay. Um, no, Minister, on that, uh, it was something we discussed before, and it's entirely relevant to, to the section and to the, to the, the changes. Um, 
Your example on the disability sector is a very good example, uh, a very good example of something I raised before, which was there's, we in this committee, which hopefully will have some reasonable experience and interest in expenditure, uh, and on the, the broader finance committee, um, we only look at the expenditure within your department. Now, I fully accept that this committee should not be second-guessing the minister or committee on health, for example. However, there are two areas where I think this committee could usefully debate issues. One is on the spread, not the amounts, or sorry, not, the, not, not what's contained within the health budget necessarily, but where you, for example, as minister, have a remit across all of the departments, and therefore we as the subcommittee that you th your answer to, yes. right, um, I think it would be very useful for us to be doing the same exercise. So, for example, whereas we would not be looking at how much is spent on acute medicine versus community-based care, I think it would be very useful for this committee to say, what is the total quantum of spend? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is health going up by 10 percent? Is it going down by 6 percent? So that's something I know we've discussed it before, and you're, you, you weren't hugely amenable to the idea. But I do think it's, it, there's, there's nowhere else where the doll looks at that. And if that's your remit, it seems right and proper that it would also be the remit of this committee. The second part of it is the example you've just given, Minister, which is the disability sector. You've just listed four or five pots, of huge pots of money. Nowhere um, will they all be tied together, whereas this committee is the arguably the only committee that could do that. So can I, and Chair, I guess it's an issue for you as well. It's an can issue I, that has actually been addressed directly with the Minister. Right. I think it is, I think and it would be... The Minister has actually agreed to engage with the committee on, on the, the, the macro dream. Oh, great. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'll move along, Chair. Can I ask, Minister, uh, this is coming in as part of the Troika package. This is a condition of the Troika deal. Do we know, is this also being rolled out across Europe as part of the, the broader budgetary issues? So this is, a, this is becoming standard practice everywhere, is it? Yeah, this operationalizes the management component of the so-called six-pack, which are five directives and one regulation, uh, which introduce what the Europeans call the expenditure benchmark, mm. and it's been rolled out across the Union. All right, thank you. And finally, um, my understanding of what this bill does is it's, it's amending the, two, the 2011 Act essentially by changing it from one year to three year. Can I ask, is it doing anything else? Or is that a, does it change anything else? Or is that basically what it does? In layman's terms, is, is it a find and replace one year for three year? I mean, largely that is it. But there are amendments you'll see. Uh, I'm bringing in on behalf of the Minister of Finance in relation to the designation of the Fiscal Council. We'll be doing that shortly. Okay, but in this and in the section we've done so far, is it your view that there are no substantive changes other than moving from one year to three year in the 2011 Act? I'm not. I'm not aware of anything of substance that are that is fundamentally different from the um, existing legislation on that. Great, thanks. My final ask, it's a quick one. I brought it up to you last year. It's around the no policy change document. Um, I'm sure the other deputies are putting together their budget proposals. I'm beginning to put a budget proposal together. Um, the no budget change document would be incredibly useful. It only tends to come out 24 hours before the budget. Um, I would find it very, very useful because it's the benchmark that says if we did nothing, this is what would happen which would allow me and my team and the other deputies around the doll to say, OK, well, how are we going to get to the target? Would it be possible to get the no-change document early this year so that we could use it? I certainly would use it as the, as the baseline for my budget proposal. I'll, I'll uh, consider that and come back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.